Good morning, friends. Diana here from Garden Love Homestead. Today, I decided to take a peaceful walk around the garden and harvest some herbs so that way I can make these smuggle sticks. I've been thinking a lot about these smuggle sticks because I wanted to um, use them on my house and just clear the air on my property and mainly inside the house. And I want to give this a try since I'm growing most of the herbs that you need to do a smuggle stick. I decided to go into the garden and see what I can find and create these beautiful smuggle sticks. Today was really beautiful today. The temperatures were ideal, only 75 degrees. It didn't feel that hot or that cold. So it was a beautiful day. As you can see here, the first thing I'm going to harvest is some sage leaves. That's the most typical smuggle stick that you usually do are sage leaves. So I decided to start with that. And I have a couple of sage plants here growing in the garden. They have been doing quite well. They're not growing as much. I believe it's because these basil basically almost bushes are growing out of control and it's shading them but nevertheless they're still growing and they're still thriving and i feel like they're going to do great over the winter and continue to grow and thrive i feel that this will also help the sage plant grow a little bit more now that i'm harvesting some of the leaves i feel that it will start branching out and bushing out i don't know if you can tell here it was already growing new leaves so I hope this motivates the little plant to grow even more and I can continue to do these amazing sage sticks. As you can see here a little bit better, these basil bushes have really overgrown and are creating a very nice shady spot for these um, sage plants. But they're still growing. As you can also tell, I'm letting them go to flower because my bees are really enjoying the flowers uh, they are buzzing like crazy everywhere in my garden because of these uh, basil plants these sage are doing so well i used to have the same sage on my other property and they survived the winter they did really well so i have confidence that this will also survive the winter and that they will you know grow and thrive with this weather and hopefully next spring it would just bush out and have even more so i can continue to do these sage sticks i'm curious to know some of you have done these sage sticks and how have you guys used them what else have you used to create them i would love to hear in the comments um, any stories or any details on how you guys go ahead and use these um Smuggle sticks. As you can see, there's a little um, sage plant hidden underneath this basil plant. They're not in the same dirt locker. Actually, it's the locker in front of it. But since this basil plant has grown so much, it just basically covers the dirt locker right in front of it. But for some reason, that plant that has more shade is actually growing a lot better and it's created a lot bigger sage leaves. Look at this amazing bee. They are amazing. They are buzzing everywhere. They're loving the flowers, the little tiny flowers on this basil plant. I'm really excited that this garden is able to provide some food for my bees because they need the extra food so that way they can overwinter and they can have food for the winter. I feel like I have enough sage. I'm going to move on to my lavender, maybe pick a little bit of this Mexican sage that I have growing here. I cannot believe how well my lavender and this Mexican sage are doing here in the garden. As you can see, there's plenty of sage to pick from. They are so beautiful. I do have different varieties and this happens to be my favorite one. I believe this is an English, say, an English lavender and I just love how the cluster of flowers are and I'm definitely going to use this for my smuggle sticks. I used to not like taking the lavender flowers off because I used to think how beautiful they are on the plant and I would just hate cutting them off. But quite frankly, they're going to go to waste if I don't cut them. They're going to dry out and eventually you have to cut them off anyways to promote new growth. So they have to come off in order for this plant to continue to grow sprout new little flowers and do a little more branching. So 
don't feel bad cutting your beautiful flowers you're gonna use it for a good purpose and it's gonna be useful unlike if you leave it on the plant it's just gonna be basically you're just gonna have to cut it off eventually and throw it away I just couldn't help myself I had to show you these bees that are loving this lavender plant they are just enjoying the flowers bouncing from one flower to another one and they are just i'm fascinated by the bees we we're getting a lot of hummingbirds and we're also getting a lot of butterflies which i'm pretty impressed and i'm really happy i'm really happy i have never seen this many hummingbirds i hope that um they continue to come and they just create a little sanctuary for them so they can you know multiply populate and we can have tons of hummingbirds in my garden and they happen to love this mexican sage they absolutely love it so i'm definitely going to put some more to provide a happy atmosphere for them it's funny because there's actually one hummingbird that actually flies around around me when i'm in the garden and he just follows me around and it's kind of comforting knowing that he's there and i feel that maybe he knows that i'm the person who's creating this beautiful garden for them and it makes me feel kind of nice hopefully i can capture him on camera and you guys will see he always stands on this one specific branch on my key lime tree that i put up on the hillside now I also have this type of basil and it has this beautiful flower that I want to use on this muggle sticks. As you can see, also the bees are loving this. I'm going to try to trim this down. Hopefully I can overwinter some of these plants because I have plenty of space to put other things in the garden. Uh, it's just an experiment. We're going to find out if they will overwinter here in zone 9b but as you can see the color the contrast between the green and the purple flower is stunning i love looking up the hillside and seeing this beautiful bush full of tiny teeny little flowers that the bees are enjoying and benefiting from as you can see i have plenty of plants here on the hillside i'm also going to get some rosemary to put on the smuggle sticks and I'm going to pick some long stem. This will also help promote this little plant bush out and grow some more, uh, more tender rosemary. So it's benefiting all around my plants and also me. I can harvest it and use it for something such as this. Now that I got a good selection of herbs, what I'm going to do is just lay them out and figure out exactly how I want to create this muggle sticks. I definitely want to use my sage and my lavender and my Mexican, uh, my beautiful Mexican sage that you can see here on the left. You're going to need something like a string, something that will burn and it won't, you know, create a lot of smoke. I felt that this would be perfect for it. Some scissors. And I'm just going to lay everything out to get inspired and figure out how I want to start, how I want to do it, and go from there. I was hoping that these sage little leaves were a little bit bigger just to make this job easier. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leaves that are bigger and lay them out flat. And then eventually just add more of the smaller leaves to create kind of like a little burrito and then go from there start adding my lavender or whatever else that i decide to do and i'm just going to sort through these leaves and find the bigger ones that way i can make somewhat of a burrito <laughs> and i'm gonna put the bigger ones on the lower part and then i'm going to put the smaller ones above I'm hoping to get a pretty fat smuggle stick and that's the reason why I'm putting these leaves together and since the little ones won't really help retain some of the other leaves I'm going to put them on top of the bigger ones and kind of build like a little ladder from you know biggest to smallest and then eventually I'll just wrap it once I have them aligned what i would suggest which i didn't do here is i would put the string below it before i lay it down so it's ready to get wrapped once i am done layering all of these leaves 
As you can see here, I'm adding the second layer of the bigger leaves. That's going to help me wrap the whole entire little um, smuggle stick together. And all the little leaves are being, uh, and they're going to be in the middle wrapped all together, which will provide a much thicker uh, smuggle stick. I'm pretty sure that if you guys have bigger leaves you won't have to struggle as much as I had to and I'm sure you guys will find your own method to wrapping your smuggle leaves. I just didn't want a lot of teeny leaves sticking out of the smuggle stick so that's why I decided to put the bigger leaves uh, underneath so that way it can wrap a lot better into a little smuggle stick burrito. I'm curious to know how many of you guys have done this before, if this method seems easy enough or is there an easier way that you guys suggest. I'm pretty sure that people who come and look at this video, they're going to look for resources and I'm pretty sure they will read the comments if you guys have any other suggestions. I decided to start tying it down at the bottom to kind of test it out to see how easy or how well this was going to get wrapped. And once I have the lower part tied down, I'm going to add my lavender leaves or little flowers so that way I can start wrapping it as you guys will see right now. Now, obviously, it depends how many leaves you guys want to put. Since I was giving it a test run, I didn't make it as thick as I wanted it to be. But the next few that I'm making will be a little bit thicker and this would just be my test run to see how it come out i'm pretty happy with the way it came out i think that it once it dries out and the lavender hopefully retains the color it's going to look pretty pretty nice well here's one out of a couple that i'm going to be making as you can see it's not ginormous but it's not tiny either it's perfect for the first one. Let's continue. I'm going to do this a lot quicker now so that way I can get them done and do a few and you guys can see how it turns out. As you guys can see I'm using the same method as I did earlier. I'm going to let you guys just enjoy and if you guys don't want to see me do another one, if you want to get to the end and see all of the ones that I created, just go ahead and fast forward but I'll let you guys enjoy this. Another one is done. The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to use more of my herbs like the rosemary. I'm going to use oregano and I'm also going to use the flowers from my basil as you guys can see here. It's going to be a different one than the original ones and the ones that you normally see. I will be using some leaves as well of sage but I'm going to mix it up this time and just see how it turns out. Now I want to hear from you guys, like I said earlier, and I want to know how do you guys use your um, your smuggle sticks and what do you guys include in yours? I definitely want to add more flowers next time. Hopefully next time I do this, there is more flowers to harvest and I can add more colors. So easy to do and so much fun. Honestly, I had ordered some and realized why didn't I make these myself? I'm glad that I ordered some because it did come with a beautiful shell and a rock. But now that I know how to make these, and I guess you guys can see how easy it is to make them, I'm going to make them more often and hopefully stock up enough, maybe give some of these for Christmas or as presents or, or even as a beautiful accent to a present on a box on top of the wrapping. I'm not sure. There's many things you can do with these and um, so many great ideas. I also want to hear if you guys have any great ideas on how you guys can use these, how you guys can gift them, where you can put them, or just any ideas I want to hear from you guys. As you can see so far, I've gotten three done in just a few minutes and I'm working on my last one that it's a little bit more while with my um with all the herbs i put a little bit of everything in this one and i really like the way it looks it looks like a bouquet and i'm loving it so 
as you can see i didn't use all of my mexican sage i'm going to just maybe put it in a base and put it as an arrangement for my kitchen table but it was super easy guys i'm very appreciative of you guys staying tuned for this video it's just a diy that i decided to do today and just have a peaceful day enjoy the day enjoy the garden and use you know what i'm growing to do something useful i am super satisfied with the results i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you're new to this channel consider subscribing hit the notification for more videos like this and i hope this inspire you to get out to the garden and create something useful and beautiful with everything you have going on if you guys don't have a garden i suggest that you guys start growing even if it's just one herb start with sage you can literally do this with just sage you don't need to add any flowers and even if you do want to add flowers i mean there's flowers everywhere you can go for a walk and find a beautiful flower that is like an herb i hope that you guys have a blessed day and i'll see you in the next one